I want to share from the book of Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Allow me to read with us that portion of the scripture. Then we'll pick some few principles from there and then pray together in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. The Bible says, and this is a father speaking to his children. The Bible says, my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and consecrate on understanding. Verses 3. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. And you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Verses number seven. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. Our heavenly father, the great I am, we are before you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, I want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you for your children who are here this morning. We have our little children. We have parents present here, oh God. But all of us are your children. And Lord, you are speaking to us, reminding us of the benefits of wisdom. Lord, as we engage on this month of family, how I pray in Jesus' name that you will download wisdom to us. And God will live to praise you and to glorify your name. I surrender everything to you as I decrease so that you may increase in my life as I bring forth this word. We receive your grace. We receive your power. In Jesus' name I pray. And the people say, Amen. The family as God intended. You know, if you look at that statement, many things can be running in your mind. What did God intend for the family institution? What was in the mind of God when he created Adam and Eve? What was he thinking about family? That is what we want to share together from the scripture I've just read. And I know we are going to be blessed together in Jesus' name. This is wisdom speaking. God is speaking. God is saying, my child, listen to what I say. Treasure my commands. In other words, the father is talking to his child. Wisdom is talking to his child. And wisdom is saying, treasure my commands. In other words, take them seriously. If you are going to enjoy the institution of family, take my commands seriously. Then he said, tune your ears to wisdom. In other words, every time your ears should be tuned to wisdom. Because as your ears are tuned to wisdom, things don't remain at the same place and concentrate on understanding. And as we talk about the family that God intend, we see that wisdom is calling us to cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Because people today are facing a lot of challenges in their life, particularly in the family setup, because people are not crying for insight. People are not crying for understanding. But wisdom is saying, cry out for insight that you may understand what is happening around you. Cry out for understanding. Ask God for understanding. God, how can I raise my children? God, how can I do this and this? How can I submit to my husband? How can I love my wife? God is saying, ask for understanding. Search for them as sealed for silver. The way we go out to look for money every other day. We should be looking for Wisdom, just the same way 
Sometimes you don't sleep. You just think about how tomorrow you'll be doing your business or reporting at your place of work. God is saying, search for them as you hold for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. These things are hidden somewhere. You have to, to take responsibility to look for those treasures. And the Bible goes on and on. And verse 7, the Bible says, he grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. He's a shield to those who walk with integrity. If you agree with that word, say amen. You know, God's desire is that our family should be safe. That is the desire of our God. He desires that our families should be safe. And maybe the question we need to ask ourselves this morning, is our family secure? Is your home secure? Because the desire of God is that families should be safe. And for us to address the issue of family safely, meaningfully, it is important for us to ask some relevant background issues that describe this 21st century families that we're experiencing today. And there are a few questions we'll be asking together. And I'm praying as I ask this question to us, to our children, to our youths who are here, to our teenagers who are here. We ask God to help us to, to understand his mind. Because God is saying, cry out for insight. Things are going wayward. And you wonder, what is not happening? But I've realized, unless we go back and understand the place of wisdom in our families, we miss something that is very, very important. And I want to ask this question. And probably you can ask your neighbor on my behalf. Ask your neighbor, is your family safe? Just ask the other one, is your family safe? And maybe as you answer that question, we are asking ourselves, what is causing the insecurity in your family? What is causing insecurity among your children? What is causing insecurity between husbands and wife? Because in the mind of God, God desires that family be safe. But the question we are asking ourselves, what is causing the insecurity? I might be referring to your spouse this morning, to your children, to your servants, to the people around you, to the community that you live around. Are you secure? Because the intention of God is that family should be safe. And there are three questions that we need to ask ourselves every other time as children of God who want to know where God is taking us. The first question that we need to ask ourselves, what issues constitute to the status of family life today? That is a question that any serious child of God should be asking him or herself. What issues constitute to the status of family today? Because if you can look at those issues, then you can understand the importance of you going back to what God is saying, my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. If you can, if you can look at the issues that constitute to the status of the family life today. I don't know what constitutes your family as a child of God. But we'll be looking at some few things as we move on. The second question is, what constitutes its ability and attrition? What makes that family do what he's doing? What pushes or what's the power behind what the family is doing? And we'll be looking at the scripture just to answer this question. The third question that I'm asking myself, what are the societal interventions on matters marital counseling changing trends in family life models and the future of family institution in these developing nations like ours, Kenya. What is that societal intervention on matter that concerns marital issues, that concerns the trends that we are seeing in our current, current world we are living in? And I want to say this child of God, even as we look at the mind of God and ask ourselves, what is God calling us to do? It is important for us to understand that God is calling us to a level of spirituality. 
The spiritual circle in our life is very, very important if we are going to answer those questions that we have asked in the, in the, in, in the, in the, in the preaching this morning. That it is important for us as children of God to ask and do some, some study at our personal level and ask ourselves, what are these things that probably constitute our daily living? What are the abilities the things that we can do because of the grace of God that God has given us as his children. And as you look at this portion of the scripture where I've just read, there's something that God was reminding me about some truth. If we are talking about family as a safe place, we cannot run away from these four truths. The first truth is what I call having the knowledge of self and family safety. And as God is calling us to listen to what he says and treasure his commandment, there is this truth of knowledge of self, knowing who you are, and knowing how the family is supposed to be safe. The second truth is the knowledge of your neighbor. Your neighbor can be your child. Your neighbor can be your spouse. Your neighbor can be your wife, your husband. Your neighbor can be your workmate in the place of work. That servant who is taking care of your house, that lady, that boy, that can be your neighbor. You need to have knowledge of your neighbor and family safety. And that's why I'm asking us, is our family secure? Because if we cannot understand these questions, then probably we are living in insecurity. And God's desire is that families should be safe. And I'm praying in Jesus' name that as we get the mind of God, because wisdom is calling, wisdom is saying, turn your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. That is the only way you'll begin having the knowledge of your neighbor, the person who is created in the image of God. You'll begin understanding him or her in a different way. Number three is the knowledge of resource relation and family safety. We'll be expounding on that a little bit as we go on. Because if you don't have the wisdom that comes from the Lord, even the knowledge of resource relations and your safety as a family becomes very, very serious. Number four is the knowledge of goals and destination and family safety. What I'm trying to say is this child of God. Looking at this spirituality circle, God is calling us to a place of taking advantage of our spiritual capital. And when we take advantage of our spiritual capital, things don't remain the same in the four areas we are trying to talk about this morning. In the knowledge of self, knowledge of neighbor, knowledge of resources, knowledge of goals and destination. You'll find that things don't remain the same. It is true and you'll agree with me that people rise because of the revelation they receive. Somebody say amen. You rise because of the revelation you do what? You receive. And wisdom is calling us, my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. So if you are going to rise in your family, it depends with the revelation that you, see, you receive. Because you can just be there, God is talking, God is telling you, listen to what I say. Pay attention to my command. And when you miss to listen to God, when you miss to take attention to what God is saying, you can miss something very, very important in your life. I'm still growing in this journey of salvation. But I've realized that spiritual capital is more powerful than anything else. If you can take your time to listen to what God is saying over yourself, over your spouse, over your children, over your resources, over the destination of this, this life we are living in. I tell you, child of God, that things will not remain the same. If you agree with me, say amen. There is a level of spiritual wealth that, that just lead you to the next level of your life. And I want to say this with all humility. You might say, Pastor, in all those four areas, I'm doing very well. But if you look at it well, there's insecurity. 
And this is because if we don't work on our spiritual capital well, we'll miss what God wants to do with us. Because spiritual capital makes things move with speed. Somebody say amen. When, when you're operating in the understanding, in the insight of things of God, things move with a faster speed than maybe you expected. And the question you should ask yourself this morning, either you are a child, you are a youth, you are a teenager, you are a married person, you need to ask yourself this question. How much am I worth spiritually? Because that is a game changer when it becomes the safety of a family. How much am I worth spiritually? Because if you can answer that question, then you'll be blessed of God. We live at a time when many people are spiritually bankrupt. And because of that bankrupt, bankruptcy, you find that there's no security. And in the mind of God, God is saying, I want my people to be secure. No wonder in verse 7, we have just read, the Bible says it grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. I don't know what your Bible is saying. My trans translation is saying, it grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. Somebody say amen. I know I'm speaking with men and women who God has given common sense. When you have common sense, there are things you cannot do. When you have common sense, there are behaviors you'll want to avoid. And this is where God is calling us to. He's saying, my child, listen to me. Listen to my cry. Listen to my commands and experience what I can do for you. And when we talk about these four quadrant truths, these are things that we always mention every other time. The psychological pie, the social pie, the economic pie, the political leadership pie. These are things that we always engage in our lives every other day. And we need to ask ourselves, when it comes to the psychological pie, what is my knowledge over myself? Because if you understand yourself, then the family safety is guaranteed. There are people who don't know who they are. They don't know their position as children of God. And as a result, you find things not going in the direction they want them to go. In the social pie, where we are saying, do you know your spouse? Do you know your children very well? Do you know your neighbor as well? Because that also will make it clear whether you'll be in a safe place or in a secure place. The economic pie where many of us try to push very seriously to make things meet and life move on. I've come to realize, child of God, that all these things we are seeing, the political, the economical, the social, the psychological, it all begins with God. Somebody say amen. These things all begins with God. It doesn't matter what you're trying to do. If you miss the place of where it starts from, you miss everything. Because probably we are chasing certain things around these four things. But we have put away the spiritual reality that all these things begin with God. My psychological pie begins with God. My social pie begins with God. For me to understand my wife, I should listen from the Lord and hear his commands very well on how I should relate with my spouse, how I should relate with my children, because that is very, very key. If we put God outside of the equation, child of God, we will continue struggling. We'll continue staying in an insecure environment. That is why I'm saying we need God in the picture of what is happening around us. And when God comes in the picture, you will be in a safe environment. Somebody say amen. And because we are saying it begins with God, you need to know your God. Can you tell your neighbor, know your God? Listen to me, husbands who are here. There is no way you'll understand your wife well if first you don't know you are God. Wives who are here, there's no way you'll understand your husbands well 
if you don't know you are God. Children who are seated here, if you want to understand your parents, know God first. And as you know God, there are certain things that God will speak to you. No wonder the Bible is saying, my child, listen to what I say, the instruction that God gives you on how to relate with your parents, on how to relate with your spouse. There are some instruction God is giving you on how to relate with your servants. So if you don't know him, it becomes a mountain for you as a child of God. This man of God called Tryon Edwards, I said something that I've quoted here. People never improve unless they look to some standard or example higher and better than themselves. I don't know which example is better than ourselves than God himself. That we can turn to God and try to understand what is God saying about my economy? What is God saying about my political and leadership pie? What is God saying about my social pie? What is God saying about my psychological pie? Because when you get the mind of God, things don't remain at the same position. The great commandments enjoin us to exercise love at three levels. Love number one to God, number two to self, and number three to others. And you'll agree with me that for you to love anyone meaningfully, whether God, whether yourself, or your family, requires some sense of knowledge, some significant knowledge about the one being loved. There's no way you can say I love God and you don't have the knowledge of the God you want to love. There's no way you can say I love myself and you don't understand yourself as a child of God. There's no way you can love your neighbor or your spouse if you don't have the knowledge about the spouse, the child, the wife that you want to love. Family safety is premised on love and the love we are talking about begins from God. That love is the love of God. And I challenge us this morning with all humility as we talk about the family safety. There are so many cases today because there's insecurity in the family. There are so many court cases. There are so many fights in families. Children and their parents. Parents and their children. Spouses fighting. In-laws fighting because of Lack of what God is saying, my child, listen to what I say. Because when we understand the knowledge of God, when we understand this love that God is talking about, we'll have the knowledge of it and we'll apply it as it comes from him who is the initiator of the love we are talking about. Somebody say amen. As I talk to you this morning, I don't know how your family is safe. I don't know. There are things probably you are asking yourself, God, what is not happening? But even as we talk about the family as God intended, I want to challenge you, child of God, that it all begins with you knowing God. There is no shortcut about that. It is not even going to a professional counselor to counsel you. It is not even probably seeing a pastor. Yes, we can pray. But it begins by you knowing God. Because after that prayer, we want to see the safety of what God has planned for you as a child of God. As I've said, spiritual capital is more powerful. And that is a place you should invest with all your strength. The reason I'm saying this is because after this life, we are going somewhere. We are going to heaven. So as we do whatever we are doing, can you allow God to surround everything that you are doing? Your relationship, your economy, your businesses, your, 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 your social life. Can you allow God to control what you are doing? I was trying to get some meaning on this word spiritual capital. And I came up with this two or three quotation from men of God who are trying to help me understand what is spiritual capital. Because spiritual capital will help you rise 
to a different level as a child of God. Whatever you are doing, the things that you are doing, when you see your child, when you see your, your brother, your sister, when you see your mother-in-law, when you see your, your fellow member in the church, when you have invested in the spiritual capital, you'll find yourself growing in a different revelation because there are things that God has given you. And Ted Malok says this, the effects of spiritual and religious practice Beliefs, networks, and institutions that have a measurable impact on individuals, communities, and society. Societies. This is the definition this man is giving. The effects of spiritual and religious practices, beliefs, and networks, and institutions that have a measurable impact on individuals, communities, and society. In other words, when somebody has invested on the spiritual capital, it will be very evident with the impact that spiritual capital is bringing in the individual, in the community, and in the society. And many times we need to ask ourselves as Christians, is our impact being felt or not? No wonder we see very funny leaders rising up in Kenya and they are questioning our credibility as Christians. Is our impact being felt? Because if we invest very well in the spiritual capital, our impact will be felt on individuals. People will come to say, I want to see this God of these people. I want to believe the God that these people are preaching. But if the impact is not there, people will say, where is their God? I'm better off without God. And I can still go to heaven without God. But when we stand on the premises of what God is saying, I tell you, child of God, we'll experience the blessing of God. Samuel Rima says this as he gives the definition of spiritual capital. He says it is a metaphysical impulse that animates and leverages other recognized forms of capital to build capacity for advancing the common good. It gives another angle of what spiritual capital is. But the thing that is so important in the statement that he is given here, that these things are recognized as forms of capital to build capacity, be it in the family, be it in the neighborhood, be it in the political arena. There is that common good that people who have the spiritual capacity can do for the glory and honor of God. Somebody say amen. And listen to me, child of God, with all humility. We should carry something from the inside wherever we go. When you go to your home, you should be having something from the inside. It is true you can be carrying money because we need money. Money answers everything. But I've come to realize money can, cannot chase a drug addict. Money cannot chase a husband who is possessed with evil spirit. You need to have something inside you. That as you're going home, already you have invested in your spiritual life. That by just opening your mouth, the environment just changes. Somebody say amen. It is true you are blessed. You are educated. You might be at the highest level of education. Which is good because knowledge is power. But I've come to realize it's more than that. We need to invest in the spiritual capital. That when you go to a place, because of what you have as a child of God, things will obey your voice. Somebody say amen. It grants a treasure. And I believe all of us here need a treasure. That as we are walking around, we are walking with that treasure that God gives us. It grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. How I pray that in our family setup, God finds us honest people. God finds men and women who are honest. Children who are honest with their parents. So that as he's coming, he can grant his treasure. You know, the Bible says in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 16 verses 9, the eyes of the Lord move to and fro and is 
looking for somebody who is seeking him diligently that he might come and strongly support him. I know God wants to support our families, but he's always looking around. I was telling people here on Wednesday, God is searching. In our families, God is searching. In a church like this, God is searching. He's looking around. Who is that faithful woman? Who is that honest person in this congregation? And when God finds that you are honest, he will release his treasure to you. Somebody say amen. We have both negative and positive indicators of spiritual capital. The positive indicators include what I've also quoted. Integrity, being accountable and honest, offering hope, being loyal and trustworthy, loving and encouraging others, exhibiting good stewardship, being fair, creating order, and serving others. That is positive indicators of spiritual capital. And you need to ask yourself, in your family, where you are coming from, is there integrity? Is there accountability? Is there honesty? Are we offering hope to our children, to our, to our, our spouses? Are we offering hope? Are we loyal and trustworthy? Are we loving and encouraging? Are we exhibiting good stewardship to what God has given us? Because we are talking about spiritual capital that can affect the spiritual circle we are talking about. Imagine you're in the, in the economical pie and uh, you have lack in these things that we are mentioning. It will be very, very serious. Are we serving others as children of God? The negative indicators are corruption and cheating. Can you say corruption and cheating? We live at a time where cheating has become a vocabulary from the home to the place of work, even to the church. If people have grown enough and they have invested in the spiritual capital, the word corruption and cheating will not be found anywhere. Why do you think children are cheating their parents? Parents are cheating their children. Wives are cheating their husband. Husbands are cheating their wives. Bosses are cheating their, their workers. Why do you think that happens? It's a matter of spirit. If we have not invested enough in our spiritual capital, corruption and cheating will be a landmark. And I challenge us this morning, let's trust God and go to where God is calling us, where God is saying, my child, listen to what I say and treasure my command. Somebody say amen. Boys and girls in the house, can you help our parents? No corruption, no cheating. Children, can you say after me, no corruption, no cheating. Can you repeat again? No corruption, no cheating. That begins with knowing God. There's no shortcut about that. If we are going to evade this big elephant in the house, in the family, in the relationship, we must go back to him who is telling us, listen to what I say. It begins by knowing God. Somebody say amen. Listen to me, parents who are here. God is calling you to take more time investing in the spiritual capital. How is your prayer life? How do you read the word of God? How do you commune with him at your personal level? At your office, back at home, in your home. I know majority of us might be having a powerhouse in their houses. How do you relate with God? Because that is very, very important. It will dictate whether your family will be secure or insecure. The reason why we see a lot of push and push in families is because people have not decided to know him. When we know him, we'll take our issues to him. When we know him, we'll cry to him. When we know him, we'll tell him the things that concerns us. And I challenge us this morning, children of God, even as I bring this service to an end, that God is calling you and me to know him. Somebody say amen. There are some scriptures I want to read to us 
just to help you understand why knowing God is important, then we pray together. If you look at the book of Genesis, this is a very common book. Genesis chapter 1 and verses number 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything begins with God. Everything we do begins with God. Your business begins with God. Your marriage begins with God. Raising children begins with God. Whatever you do begins with God. And in the book of John chapter 1 verses 1, the Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So when we go back to the word of God, we are going back to him who wants to give us instruction on the things that we are supposed to do. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 17, the Bible says, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. All things means all things. Your servants, your spouses, your children consist in the Lord. In Matthew chapter 6, which is a very common scripture, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Listen to me child of God. It begins by knowing him. Somebody say amen. amen. Jeremiah 29 verses 13. The Bible say. You shall seek me. And you shall find me. When you seek me with all your hearts. And I want to encourage families who are here. Can we purpose to seek God with all our hearts? Because that is very, very important. You should be carrying something from inside. When you are talking with your children, you should be carrying something from the inside. When you are talking with your spouse, you should be carrying something from the inside. And the Bible says, if you seek me with all your hearts, you will find me. The Bible says, in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. In him we have our families. In him we have our businesses. In him we have our relationships. That is in God. And that's what we are saying we should begin with God. The Bible says the beginning of the Lord is what? The fear of the Lord is, the, is what? The beginning of wisdom. When we fear the Lord, God will give us wisdom. Somebody say amen. I know everyone of us here, both young and old, we need wisdom. Because there are issues you're handling now. And you're wondering, how will I manage this thing? And they are very heavy. It's only that we don't talk. If you're allowed to share what you're going through, you can be surprised. I always tell people sometimes, if one day we can be allowed, we just take all of us to the field. And we ask you to write your problems behind you here. And then you stand, we look at what people are going through. You'll be surprised. But thank God that this ion she's covered so many things. The iron sheets we have covers a lot of things. And God is telling us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. When we fear the Lord, things will not remain at the status quo. Proverbs 9, 11 says, I am wisdom. If you follow me, you will live a long time. I am wisdom. If you follow me, you will live a long time. I challenge us children of God. You no, know, sometimes we follow personality. We don't follow wisdom. And wisdom is saying, I am wisdom. If you follow me, you will live a long time. And many of us want to live that long time that God has given us. If you want to live that long time, please listen to what God is saying. My child, listen to what I say. Get understanding from me. Don't just do your things for the sake of doing them. Can you listen to me? Can you follow my instruction and see what I can do for you? Somebody say amen. And the last scripture I want to quote is Joshua chapter 1 and verses number 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your ways prosperous. And then you'll have good success. I know all of us want to have good success. All of us want to be prosperous. The secret is very simple. Let us go back to him, the author and the finisher of our faith. Somebody say amen. 
in conclusion, the Lord gave the greatest commandments. We all know there are two. The one that is vertical and the one that is horizontal. The vertical is between you and God. The way you relate with God all the time, very, very important. The way also you relate with each other, that is a great commandment. Love your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Every time you're vertical and horizontal, I tell you as a child of God, you're saying, God, I want to see safety in my family. Somebody say amen. Amen.